you were moving at eight kilometers a second. That's fast. And so you have to be able to slew the camera at the same rate of orbital motion while you're taking pictures to actually get the sharpest imagery. My favorite subject is the, the Earth at night. Aurora is just amazingly beautiful. It, it's this glowing upper part of the atmosphere that crawls around like amoebas in the sky. In terms of the star trail pictures, the stars are moving because of the pitch axis of station. The cities move by because of your orbital motion and Earth's rotation. There's all kinds of other delightful physics and natural phenomenon that you can see in these pictures and we can uh, you know, tickle our imagination and enrich our minds from this gain in knowledge. Может, потому что если я развеяла слишком сильную скорость, то звезды просто мимо пролетают. Ну, на одной стороне орбиты мы не видим звезд по той же самой причине, почему мы их не видим днем Земли из-за яркого света Солнца. Но когда станция ходит в тень Земли, и мы идем над ночной стороной нашей планеты, звезды видны отлично. Вот сейчас как раз станция начинает выходить из тени Земли, и мы видим начало космического рассвета. You don't see stars in the daytime on Earth, not because they're not there, but because the atmosphere is aglow with scattered light from the sun. If you take away the atmosphere, the sun will still be there, but the sky goes dark. That's what the folks get when they go to the edge of the atmosphere, and they're calling that the edge of space. But when you get to the edge of the atmosphere, the atmosphere is no longer between you and the rest of the universe. And the stars reveal themselves just as they would at night. Since the moon has no atmosphere, then a daytime picture if you're there in the daytime of the moon, you see a full night, night sky of stars, mm -hmm. even with the sun in the sky as well. Could you tell us something about what the sky actually looks like from the moon, the sun, the earth, the stars, if any, and so on? The sky is uh, a deep black uh, when viewed from the moon as it is when viewed from uh, cislunar space, the space between the Earth and the moon. We were never able to see stars from the lunar surface or on the daylight side of the moon by eye without looking through the optics. As an amateur astronomer, I'm interested in knowing what astronomical objects can be seen from the ISS. Sort of like a little kid leaving home, most of our glances are back towards Mother Earth. But we do have windows that face the rest of the universe. And I spent some time looking up at some actually yesterday, looking at one yesterday, um, and remarking on actually just your question that uh, the sky is almost white with, with the light of the universe, with the uncountable number of stars. You can't see the constellations because the sky is just so alive with stars. And what you see is an immensely deep blackness. Uh, the sky is almost white with, with the light of the universe, with the uncountable number of stars. most unexpected thing I think was um, the blackness of space when you look the opposite direction uh, and you see how dark space is I mean it's the blackest black and you realize just how small the earth is in that blackness and that when you look when I look out at the stars and I see you know, so many stars and it says so many stars when you look the other way it's the whole universe and the blackness is is a palpable blackness it's not just dark it's it's uh, forever Whilst in space, have you ever looked away from Earth into the black void?
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, because yeah, you time. can see yeah, because yeah. you can see the stars. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and uh, pretty much all the time you can see yeah. the stars. Yeah. It's it's not which a is black a cool void. Thing. I mean, it's black, but there's all kinds of little polka dots. There's all the there's all the stars there, and the cool thing is about it, you can see it during the day. Yeah, you can, and there's more than stars. You can see planets. You can right. see moons. You you see the ga the gas. Uh, Magellan clouds of yeah, the Milky yeah, Way galaxy. Yeah, yeah, you see the Magellanic clouds. Magellanic, see, I was, yeah. I just wanted the well, Magellan clouds. Well, there's a large clouds. one and a small one, right? Yeah. And and then you can see uh, the zodiacal lights. Whoa. Uh, those those are amazing. Right before the lights sunrise. of the zodiac. The lights of the zodiac. The z zodiacal Whoa. lights. Okay. What are the stars like in space? Like, are they just brighter than on Earth, or how, how would you describe it? The, they're brighter, but they're different. And a lot of things different about them. One, you don't have the atmospheric distortion, so they don't twinkle, right? So you see lots of points, and you see lots of points, and that literally millions of them. Uh, you know, there's you know, the thing about Carl Sagan, billions and billions of stars. There really are billions and billions of stars, and you can see them. In fact, they're so numerous, it's very difficult to pick out the constellations you and I see here on the ground. The sky, of course, was uh, was black, but it uh, had sort of a velvet sheen to it. The biggest visual surprise was just how black the sky was. <laughs> you have a brilliant sun, brighter than any sun you normally would see even here in New Mexico. Uh, you have uh, these, uh, these extraordinarily high mountains. We were in a valley deeper than the Grand Canyon. But then you have this black sky, a sky blacker than black, as the old Vit Viticon expression used to be. In like just hanging there in a vast sea of darkness and the most frightening darkness that you could ever imagine. I've often tried to explain the difference between darkness when you turn out the lights and it's dark in here or blackness. Blackness is the endlessness of it all. It's hard to comprehend. The gentleman at the Johnson Space Center got quite um, interested in this himself. He, you know, he he thought this was very curious. You couldn't. So to track it down, he actually tracked down a man that worked for 25 years in the photographic department of NASA and put me in touch with him. And the guy actually called me for a chat. Yeah, he said it was a big puzzle when they first went up that they could hardly see the stars. And um, he said they started developing specialized diffraction gratings. They started developing diffraction gratings. He said they could start seeing higher order stars, but he didn't know where that went. It became compartmentalized. Um, so anyway, I had to double check on things. So I called up Naval Research Labs in Washington, you know, the Solar Research Center there, and started talking to this uh, guy. And I was saying, yeah, uh, how come you can't see the stars in space? And he's going, who told you that? He said, I said, I said, NASA. He said, oh, that's some boys down at Goddard pulling your leg. I'm going, no, man, this is like public relations down in Johnson Space Center. He's going, well, I don't know why they tell you that. He says, because you can see the stars in space. He said, and um, here's my, um, he put me on to uh, John Bartow, who was his uh, research assistant. And, um, you know, John was basically up on the first Challenger. And, you know, he's, basically payload specialist, so he did ran something called Space Lab 2, so you know, he spacewalked, he was out there, and uh, so I'm talking to him, he's going, yeah, look, he said, the stars in space, he goes, I don't know why NASA would tell you that, he said, the stars in space are brighter on, they're brighter, and they don't twinkle. I'm going, oh, cool, that makes sense, I really appreciate that, thank you. So I called back my contact in NASA, I'm going, hey, look, man, I just talked to an astronaut, and he told me he could see the stars in space, and I go, well, he's He's a scientist and a trained observer, and he accurately reported his experiences. They said, but the information we gave you is correct. I think we won't. <laughs> вот такая вот хрень, ребятушки. Проблема даже не в том, видно в космосе звезды или нет. Проблема в том, что вы никогда не получите прямого и однозначного ответа. Одни утверждают, что там тьма кромешная, такая черная, что даже бархатная. Другие же говорят о слепящих звездах, от света которых вы даже старую, добрую, большую медведицу узнать не сможете. Позвонив в НАСА, вы получите один ответ, спросив астронавта, получите другой. 
и все будут корректны в своих наблюдениях. Если же вы покажете им это видео с очевидными противоречиями в показаниях, они скажут, что это вырвано из контекста и вы некорректно интерпретируете слова того или иного. Вас будут кормить такой херней, пока вы не поймете простую вещь. До тех пор, пока обычному человеку не будут доступны космические путешествия, они вряд ли будут доступны, вас будут кормить вот такой вот похлебкой из «Да, есть звезды». Нет, там чернющая чернота. Мое мнение таково. В станцию космическую запустить не проблема. Что-то там летает. А вот обитаема ли эта станция? И выходит ли обитатели этот, этой станции в космос? Вот это уже хз. Вы слышали когда-либо о гибели летящих к МКС астронавтов? Конечно. Шаттл Челленджер в 1986 году взорвался. А вы знаете, что все члены этого шатла через много лет после своей смерти оказались живы? Да-да, вот так. Если вам интересна эта информация, на YouTube есть ролики.